Without a doubt. And there's no question that um, our next guest knows about transitioning and pivoting and mm-hmm. any new directions. So uh, without further ado, Jenny Liss is the host of the Widow Parent Podcast and the author of the forthcoming memoir, Future Widow, Losing My Husband, Saving My Family and Finding My Voice. She's passionate about widowed families, their family's well-being in Washington and, uh, with her two daughters. Jenny, welcome to Life Unrehearsed. Hey, Corey. Hey, Matt. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Hi, Jenny. So happy to have you on the show. I uh, had the pleasure of meeting Jenny through a National Alliance of Grieving Children Network, and I was with her and the work she's doing, and I said, hey, Jen, you want to come on the show? And she said yes. So, Jen, let's begin with your story. Yeah, absolutely. Um, You know, it's kind of crazy for me to think that it was five years ago right now um, that I was deep, deep in the middle of all of this. And basically, it started, so my my now late husband, Dennis, uh, you know, it just started so subtly. He was feeling a little dizzy occasionally, right? Like not passing out, falling over, nothing that would be the emergency room for. Uh, Combined with then, I started noticing a few subtle kind of cognitive confusion symptoms, but he was mostly totally normal. So we went into his primary care doctor, you know, what's the deal, thinking that he'll just fix something and, you know, we'll be good. And uh, it, that was not the case. He mm-hmm. said, we should get an MRI of your brain. The next thing he said was, there looks like there's something really wrong with your brain. I don't want to scare you. It might be glioblastoma. Meanwhile, I'm like, okay, what's glioblastoma, right? I never heard of that. Mm-hmm. Well, it turns out it's a super aggressive form of brain cancer. Uh, anyway, he says, neurosurgeon tomorrow. The neurosurgeon the next day says, we're doing surgery tomorrow, the following day. Mm. That's wow. how it all started. Um, and it basically became eight months of him being sick and in and out of the hospital and in the emergency room more times than I can count and all kinds of problems ending up with the last several months him being on hospice at home here. Um, And then he died in January of 2016. And so he was 44. I was 43. And our kids were at the time nine and 11. That's just unbelievable. And sorry for your loss, Jenny. But what is amazing is what you've what you've done to to overcome and cope with this loss. It is very inspirational, and and I think it, it really resonates with a lot of people. Let's face it, your loss of your husband. I, I can't imagine how that was. But people listening today are going through their own challenges, perhaps far less painful, uh, but challenging in their own right. And uh, they must hear, if you can get through this, boy, I can certainly get through it. And so congratulations on how you've dealt with this. And let's start with uh, the Widowed Parent Podcast. And can you tell us about how that got started? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um and by the way, you know, you're absolutely right about people today. Obviously, with, with the COVID, there's so much, sadly, more death than than even usual. And it just makes it such a more, you know, bigger need. Um, but the podcast, so I, you know, I found the parenting part of this whole um, new world that I was in to be the hardest and or the hardest to figure out, I should say. I feel like there are lots of good resources for adults in dealing with their own grief. And, and I'm not saying it's easy by any means, right? I'm just saying that there are, there are good groups, there are good therapists, there's something called Camp Widow even. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and one of the locations every year is in Canada, um, and the other two are in the U.S. Uh, there's, there are resources for adults. And for kids even, there are tons of terrific programs, you know, Corey mentioned the National Alliance for Grieving Children, the members are running grief camps and grief programs in different places. Really great work for kids. And I was still feeling this gap as a parent, right? Like, even if my kid is going to a therapist every week, and if they're going to a peer grief group, um, you know, once or twice a month, and they go to grief camp in the summer for a few days, there's still like 300 other days in the year That's where true. it's all on me, the widowed parent, to figure out how, how do I do this new job, right? This job that I didn't sign up for. And, um, you know, it's not like I can say as a parent, okay, two weeks from now, you're going on Wednesday to your group. So, you know, 
check that box. You're fine. I don't have to do anything because they're handling it, right? That is such an important piece. And as a parent, there's still a lot of gaps that I need to fill in. So I got this idea anyway that the podcast would be, or doing a podcast, um, would be a really accessible way to go and talk to all kinds of different experts. The people running those programs, the people who write books about anxiety or about parenting teenagers or about any particular topic that's some piece of this puzzle, um, that I could talk to them and also, by the way, talk to people sharing their stories so my listeners feel less alone. So whether that's other widowed parents who are kind of, you know, experienced, quote unquote, uh, or people who lost parents when they were young, reflected on their journeys, um, I realized that I could go out and talk to these people and kind of stand in place of my listeners, ask questions on their behalf, because realistically, every widowed parent isn't going to go out and talk to all these people to find out what they need to know, right? True, true, true. But I could do that for them. Uh, you're listening to Jenny List, who is uh, our guest on Life Unrehearsed. She's the host of the Widowed Parent Podcast, and uh, it, it, it was brilliant. It's brilliant. What you created, unbelievable. The thing for me, though, is like I'm technologically challenged. So how the heck did you figure out? How did you know what to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that, that's a good question. And actually, that kind of has multiple levels of answer, right? Because there are, there are a lot of things I had to learn. And my background is not at all related to this. I spent 20 years in corporate IT before mm. this, not in not a counselor, not in grief, right? And so, but by the way, even though I was in IT, nothing that I was doing there was at all related in a practical sense to starting a podcast, right? Very, very different skill sets and everything. So, but, but I would say the thing that it, it gave me was a willingness to learn or, you know, not be, um, I don't know, shy away from learning the right. tech stuff. But, um, I, you know, so for the tech pieces, I, I love listening to podcasts, so I listened to a lot and I kind of broke down, like, how do they structure their shows? I did a lot of Googling. I did a lot of talking to other hosts. And the technical pieces, you know, it's it's fairly, it's a fairly manageable task to say, okay, I need to research what microphone I need or I need to research how to edit the episode. So, therefore, let me go figure that out, right? That's a fairly concrete um, task. Yeah. But the other thing that I realized was that I had never interviewed anybody before. <laughs> I feel your pain. Right? <laughs> and, well, and so you know, what? I'm like, well, if, if this is going to be a good show, a good discussion that anybody wants to listen to, I have to figure out that piece. How do I do a good interview? And I thought, well, who is the best interviewer that I can think of? And I thought of Terry Gross, the host of Fresh Air from NPR, right? And so I Googled how to interview like Terry Gross. <laughs> and I found some really helpful uh, interview with her, a feature about how she thinks about her work, how she approaches these discussions. And I thought, if I can just incorporate a little bit of that mindset or a couple of ideas from that, I could really make the discussions um, more compelling and you know and make that part work. Well, good on you, Jenny. You know, taking the initiative, learning on the fly, literally. Right. And when we come back, like Corey and I, there are some challenges to putting on a, a broadcast, and there are lots of fun things about it. We're going to hear about some of those challenges, and more particularly, some of the fun things about your podcast. But Life Unrehearsed, brought to you by Leanna Senior Transition Support, specialists in downsizing and seniors' residences. Welcome back. You're listening to Life Unrehearsed. I'm Corey Sirota, along with my co-host, Matt Del Vecchio, and we're talking to Jenny List, host of the Widowed Parent Podcast. Jenny, I'm sure this experience of doing the podcast is both fun, I am hoping fun, and also challenging. So I'm going to ask you about the fun. Yeah, well, you're right. It absolutely has been fun, which may sound a little crazy to say because, you know, the, the, the topic is grief. But I think that the, the um, well, the ability to learn I have found so fun and to connect with all of these really interesting people who are doing tremendous work on so many different aspects of this puzzle. And I feel like it's such a privilege for me to be able to talk with them, you know, on, on an episode each week and learn for myself and learn uh for my listeners and be able to share that with them. And uh, that's, I think that's really the most fun part of this. 
And, and uh, good on you, Jenny. In fact, the text just came in as you're speaking. Wow, my husband also died of a glioblastoma at 47, and I had a five-year-old. I wish there were podcasts back then, and that comes from Lori. Lori, thanks for texting in. And I'm sure, Jenny, you love uh, uh, hearing that, where you are uh, an inspiration to those uh, really going through some difficult times. And uh, you talked about the fun. I'm sure it comes with its challenges as well. Can you share some of those with us? Yeah, um, you know, I, I'm running a one-person operation here, and that turns out to be a lot harder than I, I thought, and part of it is that the, the, the I think the prep work is, is killing me. Um, <laughs> I try to... Join the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> I know, right? But I, I feel like to make a really good discussion with a guest, if I've got somebody who's an expert, I really want to understand their work well enough to... Um, ask intelligent questions that my listeners, you know, if they were speaking to this person, what would they want to know? And so that just takes a lot of time. And then balancing that off against, you know, some of the longer term things I'm working on, whether it's writing or thinking about how to grow the show in order to help more people, balancing all of that on a day to day and week to week and month to month basis, I think has been the, the trickiest part. Fair enough. That's Jenny Liss, the uh, host of the Widow Parent Podcast. So very quickly, because we are running out of time, could you sum up some of the things you've learned from some of your guests? Yeah, yeah. I wish we had all day to talk about Mm -hmm. this because I have, you know, like 80 some odd episodes and I've learned so many things. But I think one of the most foundational pieces of knowledge that wasn't really intuitive to me until I started talking to people is how important it is to be honest with kids about death and grief and loss and difficult topics. And even if someone has died by suicide or by something that is really difficult to talk about, it's still important to be honest with them. Um, And because it has to do with the trust of that surviving parent and how important that is. So, you know, lots of other things I could talk about that it's okay not to have all the answers. It's okay to say, I don't know to your kids and have those discussions anyway. Um, the fact that you don't actually have to be a perfect parent, that it's okay to be a good enough parent. Um, I could go on and on, but mm. I, you know, so many things and even, you know, on specific topics like anxiety and how it relates to grief. Um, and then all the resources that I've learned about available in so many different communities as well. You know, I was just going to say, Jenny, if you could just see Corey in studio, who is a grief and bereavement yeah. specialist, and she's nodding up and down, a big smile, and you're hitting all the right notes. And, and uh, absolutely, I think you're saying such important things. And, and I just want to reiterate also far above and beyond just grief that people can learn about overcoming and how to cope like, like you're doing. You mentioned, uh, Jenny, that you're doing some writing, and I understand that you might be coming out with a book, or if it's not already out. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. It's my very first book. It's a memoir. I'm very excited about it. It's called uh, Future Widow, Losing My Husband, Saving My Family, and Finding My Voice. And it's based on the Caring Bridge journal that I had during the time when my husband was sick. So during those eight months, I had um, many, many, many posts. We were fortunate to have a large community of people um, following and supporting us. And I have turned that into a memoir and added reflections today, now five years later, on parenting through terminal illness and what went well and what I wish I had known then and trying to um, really support, you know, people who may be in a similar experience in in sharing, um, you know, what I learned and maybe can learn from from my experience. So it is actually coming out in January. Um, Very excited about that. And it will be available for pre-order soon. Um, and yeah, that's, that's my first book. Wonderful. As you should be, it's, I, I have no doubt it's going to be an invaluable addition to anyone who is struggling with this, uh, or living with loss uh, as, uh, similar to yours. So I have to thank you so much. I could talk to you forever. <laughs> um, but we have, uh, my producer will be very mad at me. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How do people hear your podcast? Yeah, well, um, at my website, JennyLisk.com, so that's J-E-N-N-Y-L-I-S-K.com. That is the key to finding everything, whether it's about the book, about the podcast, the latest episodes, other writing that I've done. Um, even I have quite a bit of information for friends and family who want to be supportive and, you know, how to know, you know what to say and how to help and things like that. So I encourage everyone who's interested to check that out, JennyLisk.com. 
All right, Jenny, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, Corey, what do we've got next week? Next week, he went from CTV news anchor to pursuing a career in autism awareness. Paul Kowalski tells us all. And Zoe Quinn Phillips will be talking to us. This will be quite interesting, Corey, how our pets have been part of the unsung heroes during this pandemic. And uh, as a, a pet owner of a 120-pound Great Dane, it uh, it certainly has been uh, very therapeutic. And so thank you for listening, and thank you to our technical producer, Dave Simon. And uh, you could listen to us on Life Unrehearsed every Sunday on CJD 800 at 4 p.m. on Sundays.